Bonjour tout le monde, euh, merci pour assister à mon présentation. Désolé, euh, je ne peux pas être parmi vous aujourd'hui, euh, mais euh, je voulais partager mon expérience avec le Enrich Skeleton Map avec vous dans le contexte de Flipped Class ou Inversed Class Setting. Euh, je m'appelle Shady Atia, nouveau chargé de cours à la Faculté des sciences, secteur architecture et urbanisme, et euh, je, suis, euh, je travaille sur le développement durable, l'architecture durable, la construction durable, tout ce qui est lié avec la performance. Et euh, j'ai donné cette année un cours pour le premier bac. Euh, C'est un cours qui s'appelle « Technique de construction de bâtiments durables ». Je vais partager mon expérience avec vous. Désolé, je vais présenter en anglais, mais je vais essayer d'être plus clair possible. Uh, well, um, in the context of engineering and specifically architectural engineering, we have many concerns with the future of education and research and business for the market. One of the major issues we are looking at to create, from the educational point of view, a new breed of entrepreneurs. And when we see it from the research point of view, we are looking to enable excellent individuals and multidisciplinary teams in order to develop breakthrough ideas. If we saw both concepts, they might sound contradicting, but in the same time, it means that we are looking to high skilled students with very good uh, practical analytical skills and the ability to innovate. Well, in this context, uh, I was uh, looking at the major recommendation uh, given by the League of European Research Universities, and the European League is looking mainly to the following points. Number one, new knowledge is the source of innovation. Number two, skills are a key input in research. Number three, knowledge of new market development is very important for education. And finally, we have to integrate the project knowledge in education. So the classical ex cathedra teaching theory based teaching is not sufficient enough to prepare our graduates. And let me give you some examples with what our alumni asked for when we asked them what they are expecting from a new graduate. We did a survey with the alumni of the faculty and we asked them what are their major issues they are looking at when they want, when they start their study at the Université de Liège. Number one, they were looking at first-hand knowledge, knowledge that they can directly take and apply once they graduate. They don't want to have outdated information, they want to have the most recent, the most uh, uh, new or uh, uh, um, recent uh, knowledge content. Number two, they are looking to master this knowledge and apply it in practice before even graduating, which are two major challenging issues. You have always to keep the content of the knowledge always updated. This is a very hard task for a teacher. Number two, you have to prepare them with the skill, test them and make them master these skills so that once they graduate, they are ready to address the challenges of practice. Well, in this context, as a new and starting professor, I was thinking to send an email to my colleagues, ex-professors and supervisors, uh, in the context of asking them for wisdom if they have any pedagogical experience or any outstanding examples for design programs that are closely aligned uh, with interactive teaching. And in this sense, I asked for uh, real serious programs that pro promote interactivity and innovation. I asked for that on a Belgian level and on an international level. And I got a lot of feedback and I thank all those people who sent me their uh, uh, information. I would like to share some of their findings. But number one uh, feedback I got that the education and the teaching of the architectural education in general and engineering, architectural engineering has to focus on creative and integrative. Uh, methodology and approaches. This is by nature one of the major components in architecture because we are looking at objects that are in the built environment. They have to be designed in an innovative way while they are satisfying the demand of their users. Number two, we have to develop the critical thinking uh, ability of students. Something very important for student uh, university that they are able to contextualize what they are doing, what is done in their practice and what is missing, the gaps, the focus areas, the strengths, so that they are able to critis criticize and critically uh, 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 start their professional career. Number three, an analytical thinking and analytical skills and everything related to do deep and profound uh, fundamental analysis in order to understand 
uh, the problems in order then to su suggest innovative uh, solution. And definitely the problem or the task-based design or the learning by design or learning by doing as a major component and uh, uh, educational uh, uh, method and definitely the scientific thinking as a methodology for logical reasoning and building up common sense and taking decisions and supporting the decisions. Well, when we see these advices that I receive from these several colleagues and friends and professors, you'll find out that it's not easy to find a methodology that combines all these five issues and force you during class, from class to class, to enforce these aspects and these principles in your teaching. So one of the questions I was proposing to myself, how to do it? And to keep it simple, I suggested that I will work with a model, I call it <clears throat> the two eyes model. The two eyes model, I just invented it, I and I, and the first I is referring to interactivity. In this sense, I'm looking to force in all my classes interaction between me and students and between them uh, uh, in the class. Number two is uh, innovation. So in this sense, I'm looking to stimulate innovation in class through final products, through discussion, through solution search, problem solving techniques. Well, so this two eyes approach or my own personal philosophy that I'm developing, it's something I'm using every lecture I finish. I ask myself, was my class interactive enough and was my class stimulating and encouraging innovation or not. So based on those two techniques, I try to go through my cl class and try to reflect with my two eyes on all these five principles or teaching advices I received. Well, however, it's not easy because at the end of the, of the day, you have to ask yourself how to do that. If you look to the effective teaching triangle, uh, you'll find that 75% of the effectivity effectiveness of teaching is by practice by doing and 90% when the students themselves start to teach others. So this means that classes will be very interactive, very engaging, while we have a phenomena that what we see daily in class, that the ex cathedra teaching technique is simply uh, not interactive enough and we have the Facebook phenomena. Everybody today knows that 8 minutes, 10 minutes after we launch uh, the class and we start, students will be browsing on internet and we can easily lose them because we are just following an old routine structure that is not interactive, that is not engaging, it's not involving discussion. One of the ideas I was trying to work on was to use the uh, um, MCQs, clickers, quizzes, uh, tests in between, uh, peer discussions. These are all methods I try to embrace or enforce in my classes to increase the interactivity and escape uh, this uh, 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 Facebook phenomena and uh, but within the ex cathedra it didn't work. Uh, I got a lot of feedback also regarding the peer learning and the peer teaching but it's still difficult to apply it with bachelor students who have still uh, not developed skills and not developed knowledge uh, and they are hardly behaving as uh, uh, mature experts. So it's difficult to apply the peer learning and peer teaching. And when we look at coaching in this sense, it's hardly also to coach because still the, the knowledge and the uptake of knowledge and the level of expertise is not medium even. So coaching uh, is hard in this task, especially that students in this grade, they are more wondering and they're exploring and they would like to believe anything you are telling them. And finally, one of the most difficult things I was uh, uh, finding out, how to evaluate students. Because if we are looking to develop their critical and analytical uh, skills, it will be very difficult to evaluate their ability to think critically, their ability to be autonomous, their ability to argument, their ability to rebuttal and debate. This will be difficult to do it in a short time without resources, without teaching assistance. So in this context, I found that all these advices that I received previously, they are very good advices. My technique of using the two eyes might work sometimes, yes or no, but at the end of the day, it's still heavy to achieve all these goals with the classical ex cathedra approach. What to do then? I decided simply to change my methodology. I'm a young professor, I have the opportunity to change, I have nothing to lose, maybe I lose my job at ULJ but I hope not. The idea here is mainly to, number one, change the class setting. 
I know that already 90% of teachers, they teach like they were taught. So for me to teach in a different way, it's very difficult because most, def most probably I will refer to how I was taught and I will transmit the same problematic teaching method to new, te to new students. So what I did, I enforced a new structure in class. Every, like every class we have to sit in a U-shape or a, a circular shape. Students have to be facing each other and no student is allowed to sit on the same chair more than two times in a row uh, during the semester or the quadri semestre in general. This means that students cannot hide in their comfort zone and every time they know they are conf confronted with discussion, they are confronted with engagement and in this sense I am moving them from being passive to active. Number two, I use this setting to help me in order to keep always my focus on interaction. So every time I forget and I go with lecture or I have the stress of going through a lot of material, I remember the setting and this setting is meant from the beginning to encourage discussion. Number two was referring to the enriched skeleton map method. I was talking to uh, one of my uh, PhD supervisors, he's from Eindhoven University in the Netherlands, and I talked with him about my problems of uh, uh, applying all these goals and these learning objectives in a short, uh, poor resourced uh, course and while willing to achieve the objective. And the professor there advised me to uh, take uh, a course or attend actually a session on the enriched skeleton map. I went to Eindhoven, I checked uh, this uh, method, how they do it. And in fact, so far it worked very well and that's what I would like to share with you. So let me uh, share how it works. Simply, I prepared all the course material on day one of uh, the study day we started. Every, all my handouts, they were on the e-campus. So students had access to all my slides. Students are forced every lecture to read before they come to the course. They have to read the handouts. And this is how my handouts look like. You will find a topic related to the construction technology of buildings. Here I'm talking about uh, the hierarchy of structure. I'm giving some graphs, some explanation. Students have to go through these slides and they have to prepare their first structured map. They have to do it individually and they have to do it home. Why they have to do it? Because the idea is to encourage them to summarize the whole lecture into a structure, readable structure. They have to create a bubble with a tree, with branches. They should not exceed seven branches so that they are able to summarize the whole lecture under sub seven subheadings with a major bubble addressing the main major topic of the slides. And then I ask them to prepare it in a way that I will ask them randomly in the class to present it. So every presentation I have the beginning of the class stress. This stress is with students because they are worrying are they going to sele be selected or not. Randomly using a simple device I select a student to present. This student has to come in front of the class. All the students have to come around this student in a half circle and the student have to present his or her uh, uh, skeleton uh, map uh, as they interpreted and how they analyzed or uh, summarized the lecture. The students propose their structured map. This is the proposition, number one. They start to uh, explain it to the class and how they built up the logic of substructuring. And then the whole class start to discuss with the student and revise and modify this first structured map in order to improve it, modify it, rebuttal, uh, make fine tune it. And in this context, students are going back to visit the lectures. They are going more into depth and they go back, challenge the first student and check with him or with her, uh, was it correct to create this kind of structure? Well, after this is done, I ask the whole class to create the modified structured map. And then we have finally a consensus-based, debate-based, presentation-based, analysis-based enriched skeleton, uh, uh, sorry, it's still so far a skeleton map, it's still not enriched, it's just a skeleton map that we did collaboratively, collectively in class. Now comes the next step. The next step now is to divide the class into small groups and split them and ask each group to develop an enriched part for this map. 
So students work in pairs or in maximum uh, groups of three. Each group has to enrich this map with a certain component. What could be the component of this context? I can give you several examples. These are all examples related to my uh, course or my study specialization, which are examples related to the construction and building construction techniques. But I can show you, for example, they have uh, um, uh, ready-made small brick stones. These brick stones, they use them to build up a component in a wall, in an envelope, uh, in a building. This could be one of the enriched uh, uh, multimedia uh, uh, or engagement uh, examples. Another example could be using the shish kebab sticks and building a structure, a skeleton, a frame. Uh, another enrichment, they have a library of different natural materials and also uh, 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 construction materials. They can combine and use them as a library for enrichment. Uh, they can go on internet and consult different uh, websites or look for videos, look for codes, standards, examples, case studies and use them for enriching the skeleton map. Uh, some other students, I allow them uh, to work uh, on pictures, take pictures and process them and provide feedback for the pictures or even work with uh, 3D models using uh, software like SketchUp or others to develop models related to the class or the lecture materials or go and draw uh, technical drawings specific for uh, the example or the lecture material. So these are all kind of examples. As you can see, this is a section in a passive house uh, um, construction. Uh, this is another example. A student is developing an infographic and after they develop it, they have to uh, describe it and support it with information in order to uh, uh, provide details on the component of this detail. And finally, we come to the final enriched map. Well, after the class is finished, there is every class are responsible. He or she has to draw the enriched skeleton map and embrace and include these enrichment examples in the final map. And then this will come to the next lecture, we will have a group discussion, all students kind of peer uh, uh, review this skeleton map and they approve it to use it as a reference document for the course. So simply I turn out the classical lecture into an enriched skeleton map that we use for study material even for the exam at the end of the year. Well how it looks? It looks in this like this kind of map, as you can see, and it's all supported with different examples, images, standards, clips, technical drawings, in order to visualize uh, uh, this information in a structured way and enrich it with examples from reality. Well, fact sheet so far with this enriched skeleton map, my own experience. Number one, it definitely increased the interactivity among students. Students were the whole classes working, engaged, no, almost nobody is sitting, only when they are looking on internet, looking for something, but they are fully engaged. Number two, students are working in a very collaborative day, a way. One of the things I was shocked when I was uh, teaching this year, uh, last year actually at ULJ, I found that students are so competitive and they are really, if they can walk on each other's neck, they will do it. So with this methodology, really we started to collaborate and I had to stop them many times and tell them, guys, we are a team. I'm not looking here to select the best student. I don't care about the best student. I'm looking that we collaboratively develop a knowledge and improve it, refine it and benefit from it. So this was another uh, point I realized. Um, for sure, the enriched skeleton map in itself, it's, in, it's, it's combining several teaching techniques. It has the peer review, it has the presentation, it has a debate, it has a discussion, it has a research. So it's a very rich technique that can combine different teaching methodology and technique. And definitely it increases the student autonomy because this, this is one of the major objectives I'm looking at. I want the students to go and read documents, look for resources, tap into biographies and get information beyond my course limitation. Even if I was the best teacher in the world, once I publish my slides, they are outdated because tomorrow there is a new publication, there is a new conference paper, there is new experience of somebody. So in this sense, I'm allowing the students always interactively to produce additional material to my slides, be, do it in a creative way and do it in an autonomous way. And definitely, I can promise you from my own experience, this enriched skeleton map technique or this flipped class 
uh, technique, it's exceeding the lecture limitation by exploring beyond the handout material, like I just explained, that you have always material up to date, the first hand knowledge that I was talking uh, in the beginning of the lecture, and it outperforms the X cathedra and postcards. If you can ask me what's the difference between this technique or what would be the future teacher in a university, I would say mainly if we are going to compete with podcasts, MOOCs and the online learning environments and the old ex cathedra teaching, I would say enriched skeleton map is a very uh, promising technique. And from my point of view, it requires also less teaching guidance, but it requires more coaching. So I'm really enjoying it because I'm not doing babysitting. I'm not explaining a kid how to do this or that. They are already getting mature. And when they develop the enriched skeleton map, they have something solid. They have read something before. They watched a professional video. Uh, they saw a technique. Then they come talk more on my level. And this is very important for me as a teacher because I get less frustrated on the opposite. I get more motivated. I find a bachelor one student talking on a good expertise level that allows me to coach him or coach her and go further. Well, this is almost the end of my presentation. I just looking forward to do some measurements because all that could be subjective uh, work. I'm looking to measure the knowledge uptake. I'm looking to measure the students interest in general interactivity, how they are autonomous and their analytical reading capacity and in general the teaching effectiveness and I would like to do it with evidence-based techniques. I'm not expert in this field, but I'm open uh, for any suggestion and readings in the coming years. And definitely I would like to compare it with the traditional classes. And finally, I would like to ask, uh, thank you all for your attention. I wanted to share this with, the, with you. Don't hesitate to share uh, any information, any feedback with me. My email is shady point, uh, period at, ya, at ulg at ac.be. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank <laughs> you.